All right, so here's an overview of the uh, Java desktop client that I'm writing. Um, this I have the intention of running this on the uh, Raspberry Pi that's going to be mounted in the wall. I think I talked about that in my intro video. Um, so uh, it's going to be, it does a lot, but it's going to be lightweight enough that it won't just kill the pie, you know, it'll be able to run well on that. Uh, so some of these features, which I'll go into in a second, but some of these features I might not implement uh, on the version that'll be on the pie, but I haven't ironed out all those details yet. But uh, for starters, it's just a, uh, I'll show it to you, here's the uh, interface. Like I said, it's for the pie, hence the giant navigation buttons over here. Um, and that's as far as I've gotten with user interface, uh, the rest of this is just temporary. So I have the cameras, there's my living room, the garage, which is a mess, <laughs> and then our front driveway. Um, I do want to, there's a surveillance camera video, um, but these are actually uh, capable of doing motion detecting and then email alerting, which I'm going to go into in a separate video because I, I implemented that. Uh, I wrote my own motion detection script for these camera feeds and uh, they're class for these camera feeds and I thought that'd be an interesting video to go into show how I implemented that and then um, the layout's not finalized it'll be something like this probably bigger these will probably be uh, I plan to have four cameras total uh, I haven't bought the fourth but maybe all four corners something like that because you got to remember this is going to be running on a on a seven inch display uh, that's why I have it these giant touch screen friendly buttons over here uh, this garage view uh, just has an open and close button that actuates my garage um, controller, which is uh, something I'll go into later. It's just a, uh, a Wi-Fi chip that has an in-out that controls a uh, universal garage door opener. And uh, I added the video feed of the garage so I could see it open and see it close and just make sure, like, if it's if I'm away and I get an alert that this is opening I can close it and then I can visually make sure that it's closed sorry my phone's vibrating uh, and then on the uh, lighting control panel this is going to be overwhelming I know uh, two buttons one for my office light and one for our living room light which are the two that I have um, the two circuits that I actually have installed in my house so far these are the two I can control and I'll go into how those work um, right now I mean these will turn on and off the lights <laughs> Interface wise needs a lot of work, but I'm just uh, trying to get the skeleton in place and then I'll uh, build a uh, interface and then um, our home theater stuff isn't implemented at all yet. So it's just a, a placeholder panel. Uh, but this is a general idea of the uh, layout I'm going to use, but uh, the real core of this system is how it how it works. So I'll go into the code a little. Uh, I have a command sender class that is making a um, URL connection uh, with my web service and it uses the syntax that I described in my other videos when I discuss the web service. Very simple. Um, any class can call uh, this static command um, that runs as a thread. It's a runnable. Um, and you just it just needs to pass the target device, the command name, and the body of the command. And then uh, the, this class takes care of sending the command to the web service. Um, really simple. Uh, I have a command listener that runs as an HTTP server. That's for incoming stuff, bi-directional things like um, uh, I'm, I plan to implement a uh, garage door sensor that's going to actually uh, detect the position of the garage door. Probably just a, honestly like a, a momentary switch at the bottom that when it's closed all the way it detects. Or I have a uh, um, infrared range sensor that can point at the garage door from the ceiling down so if the garage is open and it shortens the distance to the floor it, it'll know the garage door is open something like that I haven't decided yet it just depends on ease of implementation out in my garage uh, I have the cameras it's, it's pretty obvious I'm gonna skip over the cameras um, because it just it, it instantiates this single camera class and it's got my again my same authentication passwords and stuff are in there uh, all that stuff's hard-coded and that, that brings me to a point I wanted to touch on I have a lot of this is not configurable there's no way you could adapt this to your own home or your own devices or whatever without like a lot of hard coding and that's gonna change that's something I'm gonna do once I get it running for me it's gonna be really easy to pull all of that out and, and centralize all of the uh, configuration stuff and make interfaces to let you add and remove devices, add and remove cameras, do interface, do different protocols, things like that will all be uh, configuration 
uh, settings that this will be able to take care of. And one thing I really want to do is make the uh, configuration that this uses something you export, or better yet, probably going to run through a uh, web service, but you it would be uh, something that is bounced out to a web service, and then when you use the Android application, the Android client, it's going to connect to that web service, read that configuration, and set up um, that way. And my goal for that is to have one place you can configure everything, which will probably be this main desktop client, and then the Raspberry Pi client and the Android client, all that will pull their configuration from this. Just ease of use, kind of like a base station. Uh, skipping over cameras, I have a single camera class. It's just uh, a single view, um, one specific camera. I use the camera name to go out and get the uh, that image feed I was talking about earlier, the JPEG feed. And it just does that repeatedly. And then uh, I'm going to go into this more when I talk about how I did the motion detecting. But this uses a, a motion detection uh, class that then uh, can alert me via email if there's motion sensed. Sorry, my phone started to ring, but as I was saying, uh, I'm going to go into that in a different video. Um, so I think it's interesting the way I implemented it. I have a class for sending email notifications, nothing special there. Um, these other two, the lighting and the entry control classes, they're just going to be user interfaces to send the commands through that command sender. Again, nothing really fancy, just some buttons that are going to use that um, uh, syntax to send the commands. Same for the lighting panel. So that's an overview of the Java client. Um, I think uh, probably the most interesting part is probably going to be the cameras and the motion sensing. The rest of it's really just an interface, um, which is similar to how the uh, the Android app works. Uh, that's why I was saying in my uh, intro video that really the heart of this is the web service that runs it. Um, these clients are just a, a control interface because you could do all of the same level of control over these items just in the browser. You could just type these commands directly into your URL and hit enter, but that's, uh, you know, not an attractive way to do it, in my opinion. So make some nice user interfaces and uh, maybe a nice device we can mount on the wall. I will uh, make a video about the uh, cameras with the motion sensing, and then I will uh, go into the Android client a little bit.